What's going on guys? Today I'm going to give you guys a complete walk around on all the modifications I've done to my 2013 Camaro ZL1. Alrighty guys, let's obviously start under the hood because that's what everybody wants to see first. First thing I did to this car ever was a cold air intake and I did install this myself. It's by Cold Air Inductions and as you notice it has an insulated air box right here and this lid actually will come off so you can one, refill the um, windshield washer fluid but you can also then clean the, the cone filter in there. Is it a true cold air intake? Yeah, I think it is because the cold air comes in from the bottom and it's insulated, so you know you're not getting a bunch of heat from the engine. It has a velocity stacked mass airflow sensor section here, which is which is also really cool. And this is this is more of like a PVC kind of rubber material, so it doesn't get as hot as say like a metal intake would. Uh, the next things that I did to the engine would be actually this oil separator here. It's called a catch can, and that's by Elite Engineering. And what that does is uh, it's hooked through your engine's PC, uh, PCV system and it keeps the engine and intake, well basically the intake uh, cleaner and it really it just you just unscrew this bottom piece here and the oil is right there you dump it out it's very simple the third mod that I did would be the headers they are Cook's long tube inch and seven eighths headers they're also ceramic coated and followed by a uh, Cook's catless mid pipe and that is connected to the stock exhaust system in this car so I'm not running any aftermarket cat back or um, mufflers. I mean you could run this stock cat back on 800, 900 horsepower so there's no need to change it other than if you wanted just a tiny a different sound. It's already loud as is so I like that. All of the recent work we'll start with um, we'll start with the upper pulley. Okay supercharger pulley it's 2.55 upper and that's by Metco followed by a hundred millimeter idler pulley also a Metco pulley and if you can see down below there I have a 10% overdrive pulley, which is an 8.66, which is connected to an ATI balancer. And uh, obviously I have the HD green belt, which is the 67, I think, and a half inch belt, if I'm not mistaken. It might be just a 67, but, uh, but yeah, these green belts are nice. They're great belts, and I believe it has a lifetime warranty, so if it rips or anything, I can get another one for free, so that's good. That's the pulley section. I did upgrade the injectors. Uh, on the vehicle and the injectors are Injector Dynamics 850. They're 850 cc injectors. I did upgrade the spark plugs. The spark plugs are NGK TR7 spark plugs. Um, as far as a fuel system upgrade, I'm still running the stock fuel system. As far as like a pump or anything, it's still the stock fuel pump. Now it is, it is pretty much maxed out at this point. Um, I do have an E85 that's a flex fuel sensor. So this car can run E85. However, it can't run full 85. Right now it can only run 50% 93 octane and 50% E85. That's what I have down. It's just it, it's fine for what I'm doing. So the supercharger is stock, completely stock. It's not ported, nothing like that. The snout is stock, not ported. The throttle body is also stock. So all of that is stock. Now the big upgrade that I did, it was a cam. I do have a Lunati Voodoo cam and it is a 583 lift with a 227 duration and it has a um, 113 lobe separation with I think four degrees advanced uh, it was not a custom grind cam I was kind of under the gun on when I had to have all this done Andy from Diablo Formula Racing was going to do a custom grind cam for this car but they had one on the shelf that was almost exactly the spec of other cams that, will be, that have been put in these cars, so I just ended up going with that one. I am very happy with it. Uh, it made a lot of power, a lot more power than we thought. I did upgrade valve springs, obviously stuff like that, it's dual valve springs, push rods, you know, things of that nature. That's all upgraded, obviously that all goes along with the cam. Uh, it, I did change it from a single bolt to a three bolt timing gear, and I do have a three bolt locking, it's like a little locking mechanism that you put on the end there. So. That is upgraded. I did upgrade the inner, um, I'm sorry, not the intercooler, I upgraded the heat exchanger. You can see it over here. If you look down, it is an AFCO heat exchanger and um, it does not have fans on it, but it is pretty much three times the thickness of the stock heat exchanger. 
So I did need that. Um, and the reason I upgraded that was because, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about boost and, and as far as supercharger goes, but when you go smaller on the upper pulley and you go bigger on the lower pulley, that creates more boost or PSI. Now boost is a measure as a measure of restriction. So what happens is when you create more boost, that supercharger gets real hot. So you're creating more heat. So you need something to cool that. Well, that's why I got the AFCO heat exchanger. The heat exchanger cools the supercharger, dedicated solely to the supercharger. Okay. The radiator that's dedicated to the engine. So I've got a I've got a um, heat exchanger for the supercharger. I actually have a heat exchanger. Uh, coolant lines going to the transmission of this car and the rear differential and then I have a third radiator for the engine so there's a lot of cooling going on and um, the car has I haven't had any problems with it overheating I ran it 14 times at Maple Grove Raceway on a rail racing event I just did a few weeks ago and the car was fine it was like 85 degree day at the, I think it was actually hotter, but the car did fine, had no overheating issues, nothing like that. Right now I'm running 13 and a half pounds of boost, and that's achieved because now if this wasn't not a cammed car and this did not have headers or cats, that boost would be higher than, I'm pretty sure it would be a, a little closer to 15 because, um, like I said before, boost is a measure of restriction, so when you add in headers and when you add in a cam, you're taking the restriction off the engine. It's, the air can flow a lot better, so it's less restrictive. So you lose boost, PSI, but you gain horsepower. That's the, uh, Some people don't understand that with the supercharged engine. You know, uh, they think, oh, you're only running, you know, you're, you're losing boost. Well, how, am I gaining power? Yeah, you are. You might be losing some boost, but you're gaining power. You know, when I put these headers on and no cats, I gained power, but I lost a lot of boost. I lost like two or three pounds of boost. But you make it up in other ways. You know, I put this cam in and that also lost boost, but I pulled down on the uh, upper pulley and I, and I made the lower pulley bigger, gained boost. And I also, another thing I forgot to mention, uh, bring it down over here, this, uh, this area right here, you guys, it's hard to see, but there's an actual like a butterfly valve in the supercharger, kind of acts as like a throttle body or like a blow off valve type thing. And from the factory, they're not really adjusted correctly. From the factory, they're kind of adjusted semi-open. In neutral position, they're like open a little bit, right? So what we did, and I learned this from Jeremy Fermato from Faster Proms, this whole piece here, literally with the crank of a bolt, you loosen the bolt, you tilt it up, and what that does is that takes the butterfly valve and shuts it. So in neutral, it's shut and it's not letting any air out of that supercharger. And in turn, we gained about a pound of boost just from one little adjustment, which is pretty cool because you figure a pound of boost is good for, I don't know, 15 to 20 wheel horsepower, something like that. Don't quote me on that, but I don't know. So that was a little cool modification we did. So any of you guys with an LSA engine, check your, <laughs> check your butterfly valve. All you have to do is you take the lid off and you can see right in there and you can usually shine a flashlight in there and see if there's any light shining out from the other end. If there is, that means you are losing boost. Air is going out of your supercharger. So that's a cool little modification you can do. I think that covers everything in the engine bay right now. So we are going to do a little more walk around the car, show you some other mods I have. All right, so as far as other modifications that I've done to this car, I did uh, upgrade, uh, pretty much upgrade the rear tires. These are drag radials. Uh, they're Nitto NT05Rs, and they are 315, 3520s, as opposed to the stock rear tires that were 305, 3520s. Um, you can get away with a little bigger, a little wider tire on the stock room, which is pretty cool. So these are 315s. Um, they are obviously unidirectional, so you know they're specific to left and right side. And if you notice, I mean, they have barely any tread wear on them because they are drag radials, so they're very sticky. Um, I can definitely attest to these, at least on the street, they are far better than the stock tires. And the stock tires are good. Stock tires are Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar Generation 2 tires, which are phenomenal tires, but when they're warm, they're phenomenal. These don't really have to be that warm to be awesome. I mean, I can rip this thing in second gear and have tra and have traction, you know. And on a warm day, I haven't really tried first gear now because I am running about 700 horsepower to the wheels. So we're not. I'm not really sure yet. If we go around to the back here, just little exterior modifications I do. I mean, there's I tinted the tail lights. I actually got these from a guy that uh, clear coated them after they were tinted, so they're professionally tinted. Um, they literally just replacement, you know. I still have my stock taillights. So here are the uh, bezels that I put around the mirrors. 
They are not stock, they are aftermarket, believe it or not. I thought they were a nice touch though, because it does look stock. Uh, I'm also gonna show you some stuff in the interior, so let's do that. All right, so the interior of the car, I did upgrade the paddle shifters. These paddle shifters are Vitisse, um, aftermarket paddle shifters. They're actually a uh, aluminum material, and they fit, I mean, the fitment on those are very good. Doesn't take that long to install. You literally pop out a roll pin and pop these in. And they're adjustable, so you can adjust the amount of, um, basically, if you want like a long click or a short click, you can do that. I just have them on a very short click, so you literally just tap it and it shifts. They stick out and they look nice and they match with the different silver accents all on the interior. Another thing I forgot to mention was, uh, now that I'm inside here, I saw this is a remote for my, uh, the flaps on my exhaust. What this does is, when you are wide open throttle, there's flaps that open up, all right? So you're the full, they're fully open, the exhaust is louder. When you're cruising around, they're closed. And then when you reach a certain RPM, I think it's like 3,500 RPM, they start to open. So that is stock operation. When you start up the car in stock operation, they are also open and idling is, is open. So what this does is it bypasses that. So I can control them. I can make it stock so they operate normally, or I can have them open all the time. Obviously me, I have them open all the time. So that's a cool little, little gadget there. And I have it right here at my door so I can literally flip it on the fly if I'm going down the road and it's really loud or, you know, if it's like in the middle of the night and I'm coming home, you know, I, I mean, I'm a nice guy, so I don't really want to wake my neighbors up with my loud ass Camaro. So I turn it off, you know, and I have the flaps closed. So this car, um, a lot of you guys that haven't seen my videos, this car is making 703 rear wheel horsepower and 693 rear wheel torque. On just regular 93 pump gas, the car uh, puts out 661 rear wheel horsepower and 662 pound foot of torque. So um, now put that into terms of like, let's say, you know, the average car buyer or like, let's say the issue of road and track. When they advertise horsepower numbers on a car, they advertise it by crank horsepower. So like, let's say, you know, Mike's Z06, 32717, his car, Z06 is putting out 650 horsepower and 650 torque. That's crank. There is a drivetrain loss that is that happens when you figure out rear wheel horsepower. Generally, it's about 15% loss. Now, this is an automatic car, so it's closer to 20% on this car than 15. You know, uh, an automatic loses a little more power going through the drivetrain to the rear wheels than, let's say, a manual car does. So, we'll figure in 20% for this car. So, if you dial that in, let's say I'm putting down 700 of the wheels, that's around somewhere between 850 and 875 horsepower that the engine is putting out, you know, to the crank. Let's say this car was like this from the factory. Chevy would say, here's the new 850 horsepower Camaro Z01. And that's how this car would be advertised. So, you know, if I start advertising this car as an 850 horsepower Z01, it is. It is an 850 horsepower Z01. But a lot of guys, you know, the street term, you go by rear wheel, you know, horsepower. So, rear wheel horsepower, 700 wheel horsepower. That's how horsepower numbers are explained, and that's how you figure out how much, let's say, horsepower the engine is putting out. Alrighty, guys, now we're gonna wrap up the video with the moment that everybody probably came to see. And I'm gonna start the car up, I'm gonna give it a few revs so you guys can hear it.